This is going to be demonstration number two of the Macintosh MA6100. Serial number A is an Apple, E is an Edward 8883. That's AE8883. And what we're going to do is um, maybe we'll turn it off first. And we're going to feed in a sine wave from a laboratory generator into the auxiliary input. And we're going to um, watch it on a scope. And initially, I'll actually have the volume, I'll have the speakers enabled. But as we turn the volume up, it's going to be so loud, it'll distort this microphone. So we're going to shift over to what's called a dummy load. Dummy load uh, stresses the amplifier the same as it was a speaker. But instead of converting the audio power into sound, it converts it into heat. That way, a technician such as myself does not go deaf playing an amplifier at high volume levels. Um, what I've done is the item's been sitting on a shelf since uh, 2008, so I've disassembled it, and I've uh, applied a two-step chemical process to all the switches and controls. Even though they did not need it, I performed the same test I'm about to show you with the sine waves and went through every switch and control prior to disassembling it. But just to be safe, we did it again. So if, it la if the chemicals lasted for eight years, hopefully they'll last for another uh, eight or ten years. But they were fine. Just did it again anyways. And what we're going to do is um, we're going to monitor those waveforms on this device here, which is called a dual trace oscilloscope. And if I take the light away, it won't have so much glare. The upper display is going to be the left channel. The lower display is going to be the right channel. Uh, we'll back it out and we'll turn it on. And again, I'll have the speakers on initially, but I'm going to switch them off as we increase the power. Yeah, I switched the speakers off. And again, the upper display on the scope. I want to get not so much glare on the scope, but I still want you to be able to see the um, the front of the Macintosh. And I want to demonstrate two things. We can drive both channels to full power, which is right there when the, uh, when the top and the bottom of the sine wave starts to clip. That's full power. We want to back it down. The item initially came in with uh, asymmetrical clipping on one channel, which means uh, this test that we just did, notice the bo both channels are, uh, are clipping symmetrically. When the when the whoa when the, when the, when the waveform uh, starts to uh, flatten at the top and the bottom, that's called clipping. And one of the channels was not doing it symmetrically. All right, so we're going to go back and I want to show you what happens with this balance control because that's the only defect that I can. I'm aware of. And this is the balance control. And you might say, gee, they're, they're equal. They are. And the left side of the control, maybe I can get the control and the scope at the same time because that will be really effective. Yeah, we can do that. Remember, the upper display is left on the scope, the lower display is right. If I take the balance control and pan it to the left, it works normally. That meaning... The right channel slowly um, becomes lower in amplitude as I manipulate the balance control to the left. When I bring it back to center, and if I manipulate it to the right, there is no slow manipulation of the other channel. It just drops off like a cliff. Here we go. Boom. Goodbye. And that's only turning the control maybe 10 or 15 degrees. And that's the problem. The uh, right half of that element has worn out, and Macintosh does not have a replacement for it. Um, this does have a new volume control from Macintosh. They were able to supply that at the time, but they no longer have the balance control. So again, taking the balance to the left, very smooth, exactly the way it's supposed to operate. Taking the balance to the right, boom, drops off like uh, going off a cliff. And that's it.